Welcome, Krishna Kumari. Hare Krishna. Hello. Uh, well. Okay, so I got the streaming started. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Siddhantot Palasara Nityarasikam Hangsam Vilasat Makam Audariya Kya Sudhama Sevaka Dhanam Vishram Babakti Pradam Yacha Yukti Vichakshanam Tvagabido Vaishishta Shaktya Sada Vandeham Tripurari Namakayatim Shri Bhakti Vedantinam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Swami Shri Bhakti Vedanta Prabhupada Yate Namaha Gurvagyam Shirasi Dratva Shakti Avesha Swarupine Hare Krishna Ti Mantre Na Paschatya Prachatarine Vishvacharya Prabhariya Divya Karunya Murtaye Shri Bhagavata Madhurya Gita Gyana Pradayine Gaura Shri Rupa Siddhanta Saraswati Nishevine Radha Krishna Padambhoja Vringaya Gurave Namaha Devam Divyatanum Suchandavadanam Balarka Chelanchitam Sandrananda Puram Sadeka Varanam Vairagya Vidyam Budhim Shri Siddhanta Nidhim Subhaktila Sitam Sarasvatanam Varam Vandetam Shubhatam Madeka Sharanam Nyasishvaram Shridharam Vanchakalpataru Bhescha, Kripa Sindhu Bhyayevacha, Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namonamaha. One day Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Nityananda Sahodito, Godadaye Pushpavanto, Chitro Sangdo Tamonado. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama Eva Kevalam. Kalo nasteva 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 gati ranyata. So pranams, Krishna Kumari, and anyone who might be watching on YouTube or hearing this recording later. Uh, this series is called Gaudiya Vaishnavism in Numbers, and um, it's going to be about the many lists uh, we can find in Gaudiya Vaishnavism or a number of things and um, I will also make an attempt to try to make a web out of out of I can't say all because it's I think it's it's unlimited um, but there's there's a lot of uh, room, room for creativity in uh, studying um, Gaudiya Vaishnavism drawing um drawing parallel parallels and uh connecting dots um there is one book i have been been reading for this uh is from 1992 by a purushottam das it's called nectar from numbers anka sudha nidhi and it was a book that was compiled to um like make it is easier to um, uh, understand the philosophy like to, to make it uh, practical and uh, i'm also i'm doing some research to for a, for a project also so that's uh, why i chose to, to make a series about this um and when i mentioned to but Manapa Maharaj, that I would be doing doing a series on numbers, uh, numbers in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Then um, he he asked me if I was aware of the Bhagavatam verse. Um, let's see here. It's Srimad Bhagavatam, um, 
10 to 27. Um, and it's, it's a it's a great example of this how how um, like making lists uh, kind of listing the, the teachings um, makes it easier to to, to re remember them. Um, but of course, as uh, as my guru Maharaj says, like we, we, like we shouldn't think that we we know everything because we can. Um, uh, we can kind of uh, uh, like repeat numbers. Say, yeah, there are three gunas and five members of the panchatattva, and this and that, and and in that way think that we have uh, understood everything that there is to understand. Um, there, um, like. Uh, if you know, like in school, for example, when, when you're asked to, like if you have a number of questions on a test, and, and you just answer with with one word, that's that's a very basic answer. So often the teacher is going to want you to to answer with 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 a full sentence. And, and to get a better grade, you should you should like you should you should write more. You should elaborate. Um, you should write with nuance. Um, uh, and so on. It should be kind of uh, like uh, it should be kind of exhaustive. We should give, you should give examples. Um, and but one, one one very interesting thing that my guru Maharaj says is that is that even even the most uh, elaborate like descriptions. Um, uh, and like in detail and with nuance and everything of for example krishna lila is is only like like a table of contents for for what it really is so so then like uh, what to speak of uh just like lists of of concepts or uh, or ideas that like aren't even uh, elaborated on but um so, but like the list, the lists and numbers should be there to kind of make it easy for you to, to to have it all kind of categorized and and be able to um, uh, navigate. Uh, so it, it helps for like the conceptual orientation of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. But then you should you should. Uh, Kind of be aware that each 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 of those words in every list, uh, it's like if if you click it, click that word, and ten other words will open, and, and um, if you click any of those, then ten other words will open. So it's like an uh, infinite universe of um, of philosophy in uh, in, in Gaudiya Vaishnavism and and of of uh, sadhus enlightening one another like in Bhagavad Gita 10 10 9 where Krishna says that my my devotees they uh, take pleasure in coming together and enlightening one another about me and and that, that and that is never ending so the, the kind of um, the kind of the the lists of of uh, and, and like divisions in Gaudiya Vaishnavism is is, is a uh, is a portal. It's like it's like, like a way to enter that whole universe and kind of and kind of have a grasp so so, you, so that um, you like don't get totally lost. Um, so, but but all the all the teachings of of Shastra and and, and of course of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Um, can be divided into three. So here we have the first list, and uh, and those three things is sambandha, abhideya, and prayojana. So sambandha means how everything is related. Um, so uh, and abhideya is uh, how to practice, and prayojana is the goal. So. In uh, within Sambandha Gyan, which is the first division of knowledge, uh, there are three uh, 
of course, it can be talked about in different ways, but uh, it's, it's about three things and their relationships to each other. Um, that is Brahman, Jiva, and Jagat. So he's, uh, in very simple terms, God, the soul, and the material world. So uh, it's, it's about the relationship between all of them. Like, what is the relationship between uh, the spiritual world and the material world? What is the relationship between the Jiva and, uh, and God? What is the relationship between the Jiva and the material world? Uh, and, and so on. And, uh, and, and then as, as you unpack that, uh, that's when we start to go, in, go into, into all of these unlimited. Uh, but I was talking about this verse that uh, Padmanabha Maharaj directed me to because like, it shows how, how good it is to have how, how numbers can be used in, in a way that um, things become easy to to memorize and it's um, uh, this Bhagavatam verse it kind of goes step by step um, it, it's a kind of like a a, a wake-up call from where you're at in the material world and a call to uh, turn towards towards Krishna and the spiritual world. So, so it's a very beautiful uh, verse, and it, uh, it goes from it's listing things, and it's it's going from one to ten. So the Sanskrit is ekaya no saudvi falas trimulash chaturasha pancha vidhas shad atma saptatvag ashtavitapo navaksho dashat shadi dvi kago Hiyadi Vriksha. So, uh, this, this one would be a very helpful verse to, to memorize. It's uh, the, the translation goes The body, meaning the total body and the individual body, are of the same composition. Uh, so the body may figuratively be called the original tree. From this tree, which fully depends on the ground of material nature, come two kinds of fruit. Uh, and those two kinds of fruits are the enjoyment of happiness and the suffering of distress. So the tree is one. It has two kinds of fruit the the suffering of distress and the enjoyment of happiness the cause of the tree forming its three roots is association with the three modes of material nature goodness passion and ignorance the fruits of bodily happiness have four tastes and that and those four tastes are religiosity and economic development, sense gratification and liberation. So those are the, also called the, the four Purush Artas. So um, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. Uh, which, uh, and these, these four are experienced through, the, through uh, five senses for acquiring knowledge in the midst of six circumstances. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so let's see if, if we, uh, like I've, I've actually already lost myself here. So it's one, one tree, two fruits. Uh, the three roots are the three gunas, uh, four, let's see here again. Uh, uh, the, the fruits of happiness have four, four tastes which are experienced through five senses in six different conditions. Uh, and those are lamentation, illusion, old age, death, hunger, and thirst. So, so those, that was six. And now the seven is the seven layers of bark covering the tree are skin, blood, 
muscle, fat, bone, marrow, and semen. And the eight branches of the tree are the five gross and three subtle elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. The tree of the body has nine hollows, the eyes, the ears, the nostrils, the mouth, the rectum, and the genitals, and 10 leaves, the 10 airs passing through the body. And it doesn't mention the, the time, but there, there are 10 different uh, pranas, like life airs. Uh, in this tree of the body, there are two birds. One is the individual soul, and the other is the super soul. So that is uh, a classical example from the Upanishads that, in the, uh, that the body is likened to a tree. And in this tree, there are two birds, the individual soul and the super soul. So uh, very, um, uh, very simply put, we can say it's us and Krishna. Uh, if, if we are practicing Gaudiya Vaishnavism, then, then gradually uh, Paramatma will be, be replaced with uh, the, the specific deity that we are worshipping. Um, so, and, uh, like Krishna is in some form or other, like either as the Paramatma or in some other more um, specific form, uh, always uh, accompanying the jiva on its, uh, its journey in, this, in the material world. Um, so let's see, that was so this is this was a verse that illustrates Sambanda. It is talking about the, the the relationship between the jiva and the material world, and also the, the relationship between uh, the jiva and uh, and Krishna. And, and of course, the, um, uh, like once you have like mapped out uh, the, the relationship between all these things, then um, uh, the, the, the like next question is like, what, what to like do, do with all of this, this? Like when you have the map, uh, where, where are you supposed to go? And, um, and, uh, so where where you're supposed to go? That's that's the, the prayojana, the goal, and and how you get there is is the abhideya, the practice. So, so sometimes, um, so like like most often, those three divisions of knowledge are talked about in the order: sambanda, abhideya, and prayojana. Like first the orientation, and then 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 the practice, and then the goal. Um, but there are also other ways to kind of uh, order uh, that list, and, and that is, for example, to first have sambanda and then uh, prayojana. That like that once you have the sambanda uh, orientation mapped out, that the relationship between um, uh, God, the world, and the jiva. Uh, then you then you present the prayojana, like what is the goal, so that you become inspired to practice. And uh, so, so like so like those are two different ways, and uh, those are also um, uh, uh, it is kind of up, up to the up to the, the, the preaching strategy of, of the acharya. Um, uh, like to what extent, uh, which one, which one of, of uh, Abhideya and Prayojana is em emphasized first, but but Sambanda is uh, kind of always ha has to come first, uh, but then then like what comes second, Abhideya or, or, or Prayojana in in. Um, in, in emphasis it is up to the up to the acharya. Uh, and like one 
one way to uh, like one way that that uh, abhidhaya that, that practice uh, happens uh, is is uh, is like naturally that, that if you if you completely have the the sambanda uh, gyan in place, if if everything is is uh, crystal clear to you about the relationship, about your relationship to Krishna and your relationship to this world, and Krishna's relationship to to this world, um, it is said that if all of that is is entirely clear to you, it, it's it's not just an intellectual uh, exercise. It, it's um, it's it's something that uh, hearing it is uh, from the right source is completely changing your your, your consciousness. Then you are you, you will uh, like automatically practice, and and then the the abhidheya, uh, the practice, um, um, will be kind of like how you said like, like fueled fueled by your. Uh, by your understanding of sambandha, um, and 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 then like the the kind of teachings about the practice, that, that like like one may ask then like what is the what is the need for teaching about what the practice is at all, if all you have to know is is the uh, relationships between you and Krishna, and then like naturally you will just um, practice on uh, just on, on pure inspiration. Um, and uh, well, like one one answer answer is that is that if if you have that inspiration, you are you are going to to want to. Um, uh, approach a spiritual master and, and ask how how Krishna can be um, attained, and uh, and 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 the spiritual master will uh, like give you the practice, give you the sadhana. Uh, my guru Maharaj is, is always emphasizing that that. Like that is the main thing that he, that that the acharya gives to his to his or her disciples is is the practice. Uh, because by by giving giving the practice, he he is giving a, a way to, to spiritualize uh, the body, and and, and when, once the body is, is spiritualized, it is as good as a spiritual body if it's if it's only acting in relation to. Uh, uh, like pleasing Krishna's senses. Um, but then, then, um, uh, then, like, like, like the other way that that uh, the philosophy can be emphasized is to emphasize prayojan first. Uh, Meaning first after the sambanda, and uh, uh, that is if, if if the sambanda is not uh, how, so to say like clicking in you so that you automatically um, like want to dedicate yourself to practice, then you may need you may need like a how. Do, did Prabhupada call it um, to kind of kind of get a free sample? Um, so, so it, like it, it's to, to like hear hear about the goal and to be uh, and to be charmed uh, by that, so that that will inspire you inspire you to practice. Uh, of course, like we, uh, the acharya will teach about all, all of these three. Um, and and uh, what, what I'm talking about here is, is mainly the, uh, the, the emphasis. Um, like, like, like my Guru Maharaj says that he, uh, uh, that we have to kind of 
talk about bhakti uh, uh, in a way that we're talking about it eighty uh, percent to talk eighty percent about what it is not, so that so that we get a clear picture of of what it is. Um, which is uh, uh, that was uh, it was something inspired by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He said he he would kind of have to. Um, uh, what was the the phrase he used? Like um, it doesn't come to me now, but, but like go through a lot of like blood, sweat, and tears to to, to kind of to make like one person under, under, understand the philosophy. It is um, spe <laughs> spending, uh, I think he said, it, gallons of blood, <laughs> and, um, like putting work in, into making people understand, get a clear, get a clear picture. Because from the thing is, like this whole this whole philosophy comes from, um, it comes from bhav. It comes from the, the feelings of of Krishna's associates. Uh, so, so when Krishna comes as Mahaprabhu to this world and um, instructs his most intimate associates to uh, to kind of present this this teaching uh, in 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 like logical uh, explanations, like. I mean, like, like Rasa and, and Lila is not something that that's logical. But it, but it is presented in, in logic um, because uh, uh, we can say like this, that there is like a, the, uh, like Krishna Lila is something very wild. Uh, as my Guru Maharaj says, it's something beyond our wildest dreams. Uh, and to then take it a step down to, to logic um uh that becomes uh, uh, like a meeting point uh for us to, to kind of uh rise up from our kind of um chaotic and, and wild uh, existence in this world we need to kind of grab onto something uh that makes sense uh, which in this in this sense here is the, the Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, uh, but as as we as we fully get uh, immersed in that, we, we will um, we, we will go through through this logic and in, into the um, you can say. Uh, like the, the the kind of wild ecstasy of of, of the spiritual world. So it, it's something that that we we can't um, uh, like approach that directly. It's like we can't go from uh, from this chaos straight into that chaos. We kind of need to get things in order first, and then enter into that. Uh, into that chaos. Um, so uh, let's see. So while uh, thinking about all, like all the lists and numbers of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Um, I, I thought of how Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he, he, he seems to have a, he seemed to have a liking for uh, like uh, putting lists together and, and like, um, uh, like combining, combining different lists and uh, um, like, like drawing parallels. And, and it's a very uh, interesting thing to study. 
there's one, like one simple example in um, in his song Ohe Vaishnav Thakur, and that is in the second verse. Uh, he he says like this: uh, Chaya Bega Dwami, Chaya Dosha Shodhi, Chaya Guna Deho Dase. Chaya satsanga deho he amare bosachi sangera ashe. And this word here, uh, chaya in, in Bengali means six. So he's saying, teach me to control my six passions, rectify my six faults, bestow upon me the six qualities, and offer unto me the six kinds of holy association. And all these lists of uh, of six, they all come from the uh, Srila Rupa Goswami's Upadesh Amrita, which Srila Prabhupada uh, uh, translated and uh, into uh, the nectar of instruction. And so what Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is referring to here are the first, uh, the first four verses of uh, nectar of instruction. And um, uh, so when 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 Bhakti no Thakur says uh, Chaya Bega Domi, which means uh, teach me to control my six passions, it's referring to uh, the passions of uh, of words, like kind of the urge to speak, Vacho uh, Begam, the uh, the urges of the mind, Manasa. Anger, Kroda, the tongue, Jihva, uh, the stomach and the genitals, Udaro Pasta Begam. So, so that, that's the first verse of, of the Upadesh Amrita. Um, Shila Rupa Goswami writes, writes there that if, if one can control those six urges, one can have uh, one one can be the spiritual master of the entire world. But then Bhaktivinoda Thakur continues. Uh, let's see rectify my six faults and the six faults are overeating attachment to material things inability to follow regulative principles sense gratification useless idle talk and impure habits and and also, of course, many of these can be made in, into further lists, um, uh, as you can see. For, for also, some of these have uh, some some of the words there in the Sanskrit have, have double meanings. Like um, here, here it was translated as inability to follow regulative principles. Um, the word there in the in the Sanskrit is. Um, Oh, um, that also escapes me at the moment. But anyway, it, it's it's a word that can either mean that you um, that you follow regulated principles without knowing the uh, without knowing why, um, and and uh, and the other meaning is to uh, simply give up regulated principles uh, whimsically. So the thing is, we should always be be thoughtful about how, how and why uh, regulated principles are uh, are to be followed. Shamananda uh, Prabhu, is it Niyamagraha? Yes, thank you so much, <laughs> Niyamagraha. Yeah. So, so the the difference is whether the the A there, um, if it's Niyamagraha or Niyamagraha. Uh, that is what makes the difference between the two, the two meanings, because uh, it, it can be read both ways. Um, so after Bhaktivinoda no Thakur lists uh, Chaya Vega Domi and Chaya Dosha Shodi, he says Chaya Guna De Hadase, and that is um, uh, bestow upon me the six qualities. Uh, so so the six. Uh, the six faults uh, that, that he just listed are are things that are detrimental to bhakti. Those are, that's what he calls just dosha faults. 
Um, and then what he calls guna is uh, are the six positive qualities. So he, he asks, please, please bestow upon me the six qualities. Shila Bhakti Nuttakura is praying to, to the Vaishnav like that. And the six qu positive qualities are enthusiasm in practicing devotional service, uh, firm faith in devotional processes, a strong desire to attain prema bhakti, a favorable service attitude, avoidance of non-devotees, and appreciation of the company of devotees. And uh, let's see. This, uh, the fourth list of six, also from Upadesh Amrita, is Chaya Satsanga. Uh, so he's he's praying, uh, offer unto me the six kinds of, of holy association. And uh, the six method, methods of association are to go to an assembly of devotees, to invite devotees into one's home, to discuss and hear devotional topics, uh, to honor Mahaprasadam of devotees and to offer Mahaprasadam to devotees. And this was an interesting translation here that I, that, uh, I haven't seen before. He's, he's saying that uh, like normally, normally it's translated as, um, Like here it says, to invite devotees into one's home to discuss and hear devotional topics. Um, like normally it's, it's said that uh, those two first uh, kinds of holy association is to uh, open yourself to the Vaishnav uh, and to let them open themselves to you. So, so like to, to speak to them confidentially and to, and to speak to them in confidence and to hear from them in confidence. Um, so. And uh, yes, this is... Uh, uh, a beautiful pointer. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is is ask, he's, he's praying to the Vaishnav that please offer me offer me this kind of of holy association. Uh, one of which is to that that like that you yourself uh, open up. So like offer to me that I can open up. Um, this this reminds me of. Uh, the conversation in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita between Srila Sanatan Goswami and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami writes something uh, very interesting in the beginning of their, uh, like before he narrates their conversation. And, um, and it is that he uh, he describes that it's it's by the mercy of Mahaprabhu, like by by divine mercy, Sanatan Goswami was was able to ask questions to Mahaprabhu. So it's it's um, like it is not only that we are, we are asking for mercy or, or like asking for, uh, like asking for mercy in the form of uh, of of. Um, the Vaishnav explaining the teachings, but uh, like we even have to uh, ask for mercy that we can ask such questions, uh, like that we can like ask um, in in a real and sincere way. Um, it, it's like like uh, my Guru Maharaj, uh, he would he would pray. As a Brahmachari, he would he would pray that please let me be sincere about being sincere. So so it's not it's it's not something that's in our in our control if if we can ask uh, ask something sincerely. Uh, 
So, so we should ask also for that. Um, and also in, in this, in that conversation that follows between Mahaprabhu and Sanatana Goswami, there are so many things that, that come out uh, and so many lists and numbers there also like you, you can totally get lost in that conversation uh and here here i mean lost in in, in a good sense um for, for example he's he's going through uh like i mentioned before about sambanda abhideya and, and prayojana there are uh, there are also different uh, acharyas for that among among the six goswamis so the sambanda gyan the knowledge about how everything is related how everything and everyone is related um, uh, mahaprabhu is teaching that specifically to sanatan goswami and sanatan goswami is then uh, becoming the acharya of sambanda gyan uh, which is he, he does for example in in his brihad bhagavatamrita he's teaching uh like give, giving a like a, a clear picture of how how everything is uh, is related like uh what is like gradations of of bhakti and uh gradations of levels in the spiritual world uh it, it's very much a map um of both the material world and, and the spiritual world um that is uh, that is what uh, Srila Shri Maharaj was, was was requesting that that, that so, someone should make a um, he actually requested it of Srila Prabhupada that he, he makes a, a planetarium uh, uh, showing showing the universe according to, to Brihad Bhagavad Tamrita. Um, Uh, so, um, and in in his uh, Kali Kukura uh, song, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is says about Mahaprabhu that he is Sanatana Palana, and that means that he is uh, protecting Sanatana Goswami. And my Guru Maharaj has explained that. Uh, this means that he he was protecting him by by teaching him some bandagyan, and in turn, Sanatan Goswami becomes our protector by teaching us uh, by teaching us some bandagyan. Uh, and, and these and these things that he that he is teaching there, uh, this is in in chapter twenty of of Madhya Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, he, he's teaching there are things that we can relate to in our daily life as sadhakas, and, and, and not, now I mean in, in relation to uh, our sadhana, like for example, um, uh, putting tea luck. There are, uh, let's see how many, I believe there are 13 places where, where we put tea luck, and then there's the the 13th, uh, when we, we put the Achaman water on the Sika. Uh, let, let me count just so I got it right. It's one, Om Kesha Vaina Maha. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes. So those those 12 names of, of Vishnu that, that we recite. When we when we when we put on the tilak, they are, are part of this list of um Vishnu forms uh that Mahaprabhu is teaching Sanatan Goswami about here in this chapter. Um also interestingly uh the the months of the year are, are, are predominated by uh by those same Vishnu forms that uh that we um whose names we recite when, when putting on Tilak. Uh, I will read a little bit here. Um, these 12 are the predominating deities of the 12 months. Keshava 
is the predominating deity of Agrahayana, and Narayana is the predominating deity of Pausha. And I will just check here so we get also the, the kind of the Western equivalents. Um, because of course this is following the, the lunar calendar. Uh, let's see here. So I'll just get like one of the months here and that, that we can kind of calculate from there. Um, so for example, the, the next month coming up is Trivikram, the month of Trivikram. That's the name that we recite when we put the tilak, um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. So we will jump to, to Trivikram, knowing that that is uh, like roughly corresponding with the month of May. Uh, so in the month of uh, Jaishta, the predominating deity is Trivikram. In Ashadha, the deity is Vamana. In Shravana, the deity is Shridhar. In Bhadra, the deity is Rishikesh. In the month of Ashvin, the predominating deity is Padmanabha. And in Kartik, it is Damodar. This Damodar is, is, uh, is different from Radha Damodar, the son of Nanda Maharaj in Vrindavan. Uh, so, uh, so, so then again, after, let's see. Yeah. So, so going, going in that order, so, so after Damodar is Keshava, and then Narayana then Madhava, then Govinda, then Madhusudan. Uh, when putting the 12 tilak marks on the 12 places of the body, one has to chant the mantra consisting of these 12 Vishnu names. After daily worship, when one anoints the different parts of the body with water, these names should be chanted as one touches each part of the body. Um, So the, these, uh, this man mantra referred to here is the, um, when, when you mix the tilak, and if, if you don't um, have tilak, or like, you can also do it with water every morning, there is a mantra for uh, invoking uh, th these, these 12 names, uh, actually 13, also with one, one on the back of the head. Uh, and it's, uh, Lalate Keshava Bhyayan Narayana Matodare Vakshas Tala Madhavam Tu Govindam Kantakupake Vishnum Cha Dakshine Kukshau Bahaucha Madhusudanam Trivikramam Kandhare Tu Vamanam Vama Parishvake Shridharam Vama Bahu Tu Rishikesham Tu Kandare Prishte Cha Padmanavam Cha Katyang Damodaram Nyaset Tat Prakshala Natoyang Tu Vasudeve Timurdani um, so, so, so like these all, it, it is basically in, in Sanskrit saying, uh, mentioning the parts, the parts of the body where you put the tilak, and and then and then uh, connected with a certain name of Vishnu, and the uh, in in the in the lecture series that that uh, Padmanabha Maharaj gave about Vaishnava etiquette, he gave a very very beautiful meditation. Uh, that one can one can do when putting on the tilak because like it like it mentioned it was mentioned here uh, this damodar like when we say om damodaraya namaha when we put the tilak uh, on our lower back uh, it was saying this is different from the damodar uh, when we say radha damodar so, so like all like all these names are are vishnu names so not names of, of Krishna and Vrindavan, 
but of course Krishna is the source of all those different forms and names of, of Vishnu and um, like while 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 putting on like on the tea like and reciting these names of Vishnu it, it's a very uh, like sobering activity uh, we can also like remember our ultimate goal uh, for our practice the 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 the, the prayojana um, and uh, so, so like while while each each of these Vishnu names have have their kind of general meanings they also have meanings in in relate directly in relation to Krishna and also uh, also with like specific leelas of Krishna according to what you what you're as, aspiring for if you are aspiring for to serve Krishna in in Sakya Rasa for example or in, or in Madhurya Rasa. Um, so he was explaining, like when you say Om Kesha Vaya Namaha, and putting your tea like here. Uh, Keshava means uh, the controller of uh, uh, Lord Brahma and Shiva. So Vishnu controls Brahma and Shiva. Uh, of course, Krishna controls Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. So in, in that way, you can think of Krishna. And, um, uh, and and then uh, of, of course like there is there is like more you, you can go more like, like specific in detail into uh, the name Keshava it also means the Krishna who has very beautiful hair um, and there are also prayers we can do for each uh, place where, where we, we put a tilak mark so for Keshava, since Keshava is the controller of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, you can ask that he he also controls you. And then for Narayan, Om Narayan Namaha, uh, Narayan is the shelter of all beings, but Krishna is the shelter of Narayan. So please give shelter to me. Uh, Om Madhavai Namaha. Uh, Krishna, uh, Vishnu is the, the husband of the goddess of fortune, Madhava. Um, he's also the, but, uh, but but Krishna, who is the source of both of them, uh, is um, is the, the the lover of Shrimati Radharani. So please, um, and also the like Madhava can mean the, the lord of sweetness. So please attract me with your sweetness. Om uh, Govindaya Namaha. Uh, Krishna gives joy to the senses, so so please let me give joy to your senses, uh, and so on. Um, Vishnu, Om Vishnu Venamaha. Uh, Vishnu means ever, uh, ever like all pervading. So, so please let let me see. Uh, since since Krishna is everywhere, please let me see him everywhere. Madhusudan, uh, killer of the demon of doubts, please kill my doubts. Um, Trivikram, please take three steps and conquer everything, all, uh, like all, all that I am, like you did with, with Bali Maharaj as Vamanadev. Uh, Om Vamanaya Namaha, trick me if, if, needed, if need be, like, like you did with Bali Maharaj. Uh, Shridhar, um like the the bearer of uh of shri um so please um, uh, like uh let let like let let, uh, let me be in in service to to both you uh, you and shrimati radarani um Rishikesh, uh, the controller of the senses, help me to control my senses and, and dedicate them to you. Padmanabha uh, and then uh, and Damodar. So, yeah, also for, for each of these, for, for each each of the Vishnu forms, 
uh, they they all have four arms and they're and they're all holding holding the we the weapons in different hands according to, to which deity. So so there, there is a lot that you can um, uh, you can deepen uh, kind of the meditation by by studying all of these uh, facets. Uh, but now I'm, I see that I. Uh, just about out of time. So we will continue to just uh, swim around in this ocean of numbers in Gaudiya Vaishnavism in a week. Uh, do you have any uh, comment, Krishna Kumari? I know you usually have to leave right at. <laughs> yeah, I, but I just wanted to say, wow, what a very interesting perspective to focus on. Um, when I read the title, I thought, oh, I wonder what that's going to be about, you know, so it really kind of got my interest going. Um, and I liked the the title of the book, Nectar from Numbers. That's yes. really an interesting title. Um, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, there are so many numbers in our scriptures. I mean, there's, when I'm thinking about it, just more things come up, you know, Um through Krishna Leela and, and everything, there's just so many of, of like you said, numbers. Um, and <clears throat> let's see, I was just looking at my notes because all of those numbers are kind of embedded in everything. So kind of leading us into these three divisions of Sambandha, Abhideya and Prayojana to the goal. And one thing that I wrote down that you said um, that listing the teachings helps to remember them. And Oh my gosh, there like there's so much to um, remember and to try to connect and and relate to everything, and that's not one of my strengths is memorizing things. And I just wondered if you have any tips. You know, it's not this isn't really philosophically based, but it would help with that as to how to memorize this information and be able to use it. Okay. That's a super good question, which I, <laughs> I will, I will uh, think about it for, for next time. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I do have to go, yeah, at nine thirty. Yeah. But, but I'm just, I would really love to hear your thoughts on that piece. I okay. could use that, yeah. help with that. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's super good. Like for, for me, it helps very much to to get questions. Okay. To, to kind of know how, to, like, where to go. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much for being yeah. here. And thank you, everyone. Vancha kalpa terubhyas cha, kripa sindhu bhyayeva cha, patitanam bhavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha, anantakoti vaishnavrindaki jai.